Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and you'll get your Spider-Man No Way Home trailer when you fix this damn door. There's still no sign of the first look at the film, but we do have some brand new plot details, leaks, and an animatic scene from the ill-fated Spider-Man 4 that I think will just be fun to show you guys. In this video, we'll also be going over the potential trailer release date, and what we think might be the reason it's delayed. Full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want anything ruined, then I recommend you get out of here before I throw some dirt in your eye. Ooh, gonna cry now? Well shut the hell up and like the video, and also subscribe or else. Anyway, thanks for sticking around past that bit. Y you know I love you really, you know, you know I'm just joking. Now let's get into the Spider-Man new details. Now, we did talk in our last video about how Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin was actually the big bad of the movie. From what I've heard on the film, Oscorp are experimenting on interdimensional technology in order to access the multiverse similar to Kingpin in Into the Spider-Verse. This works and it actually gives him a way to go across into other dimensions. Now, in Peter's life, he's just been exposed worse than some YouTube drama and thus he's laying low at Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum as a wanted fugitive. Images of this were posted online as the first looks on the film, and we can definitely tell by the floor pattern that this is the place Ned, MJ and Peter go to. Now they apparently find the location in pretty bad shape, and as we know Strange was dusted during the snap, so this is why the building is in disrepair. We'll talk about why he hasn't had time to clean the place up in just a bit, but it has a big tie into the plot. From what's been shown, we know that the group go down to the basement, and here they bust out the laptop that Ned had all the way back in Homecoming because Tony Stark is a greedy piece of shit that refuses to give anyone money. You son of a bitch, I'm glad you're dead. I've been told that in this scene, the three read reports and see social media reactions to the news that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. See, I told you there'd be spoilers. They then go back to the lobby of the Sanctorum, and this is where Strange comes across them. If you look closely, you can see somewhat of an orange glow on their faces, and this is because Strange is at the top of the stairs illuminating this room. Turns out that Peter Parker picked the perfect place to pass, as Strange is able to wipe the memory that he's Spider-Man from everyone's mind, and something similar was carried out in the story One More Day, which this movie is meant to be based upon. The spell somewhat goes off without a hitch, and the knowledge is removed from everyone's mind, with only Ned, MJ, Aunt May, and the Avengers knowing who he really is. At the Sanctorum, Parker stumbles across a multiversal prison, which is housing several villains from across different properties. I've been told that the prison is a stony dungeon with chains hanging from the cells, and at the centre is a magical cube keeping them all in place. The lineup of prisoners includes Doc Ock, the Lizard, Electro, and Sandman. Strange says that something has broken the multiverse, and that people from across several dimensions have been brought into the main timeline. Now I kinda wanna talk about my trailer speculation date here, as I think this is probably the best place to do it. I speak to Daniel RPK behind the scenes quite a lot, and not only is he getting the what a lovely chap heavy spoilers award, he's pretty much always been absolutely bang on when it comes to trailer dates and releases. He predicted the Eternals trailer release date correctly, A Quiet Place 2, the teaser for No Way Home, Shang-Chi, Loki, Black Widow, Venom Let There Be Carnage, and a lot more. For as long as I've known the guy, he's always been right, and he's also helped me to prepare for stuff as when people were saying that the trailer, it's definitely going to be dropping at a certain date, he's been there like, it's, it's not happening mate, don't build your hopes up. Now I think over the last month alone, we've had about four different dates when the No Way Home trailer was quote unquote definitely coming out, and each and every time, Daniel has said to me that it's not. Now what he has said online is that it's probably coming the last week of June, or first week of July, and I think this makes a lot of sense. However, I also think that Marvel might hold off until Loki is over. Black Widow is of course right around the corner, so that will be taking up a lot of the marketing power at Marvel, and Loki as a show seems to be about the collapse of the multiverse. Thus, I think the plot of that might actually play into Spider-Man No Way Home, and Kevin Feige has said that Loki, WandaVision, No Way Home, and Doctor Strange 2 are, say it with me, all connected. So I kind of feel like they may hold off on that, but the counter-argument seems to be that Sony didn't wait for Endgame to release before dropping the trailer for Far From Home. Whilst that is true, the marketing of that was very smart, and if you remember, they clearly pitched it as a field trip, which is something that Peter was coming back from in Infinity War. So they passed it off as being somewhat of a prequel, even though most of us guessed it was set after Endgame. And by most of us, I mean not me, because I'm an idiot. Thus, I think that it will come in July at some point, 
most likely a Monday, judging by the past releases of the Marvel trailers. And with these always dropping at 2pm British Summer Time, I think Sony will stick to that strategy as it seems to work. Now why this might not be true is because Sony and Marvel Studios market their things very differently, and from what I was told at the time, there were some issues behind the scenes with the Far From Home trailer coming out before Endgame, but again, different people marketing stuff with different strategies. Now I do think it would be short side of them to drop it around the release of Black Widow and finale of Loki, but we will see because they just seem like they couldn't give a shit. Out here spoiling everything, out here saying that Venom's gonna be in every movie without even talking with Feige, what the hell is wrong with you? Now back to the leaks and the multiverse is playing a major part as it means that some of the characters can be tweaked and changed. Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin for example will be a very different one to the one that was in the Raimiverse and he will have a brand new suit that's far more similar to the one that was originally supposed to be in the first film. As we said in our last video, Electro's costume is very different to what he had on in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and the villain is wearing a high-vis electrical engineer's jacket that's green and yellow. Now it has been reported by superhero theorist at Murphy's Multiverse that we will also see the conclusion of the fight between the Rhino and Spider-Man that ended Andrew Garfield's second film. Rhino will also be one of the Sinister Six films and he actually gets some cool stuff to do. Now Peter is pretty worried that Strange is keeping people prisoner against their will but Strange assures him that he's fixing the multiverse and that he'll return them home. Peter says there's no way home and I, ju I just made that bit up, it's not the movie anyway. Norman Osborn goes to them in their prison and after realising that Strange's magic is too strong for him to break, he comes up with another plan. Osborn asks each one of the prisoners what the last thing they remember is and they all collectively recall the Spider-Man of their Earth either beating them or being involved with their deaths. Osborn then goes to Peter with this info and says that they're gonna die if they're returned home. He also says that the Peter of their Earths killed them and thus Hollins Parker feels guilty as he's pretty much sentencing them to death. Peter apparently steals the magical cube and Strange chases him across the city in the mirror dimension whilst buildings collapse around them. During this time Osborn makes his team and they set out to steal several Stark Arc reactors in order to help build a multi-dimensional portal above the Statue of Liberty. This now has a Captain America shield on it and above the statue they create a doorway. This is why Strange pulls across Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and from what I've heard they're not in the film all that much but when they're on screen it feels like pizza time. The movie keeps topping itself with a Peter Pepper army that fight the villains off. The Parker trio manage to cheese the day and the movie ends with them saying slice to meet you Peter. Peter says these pizza puns are a bit cheesy and they reply with yeah we do seem like a bit of a weird dough but we're here today and gone tomato. Now that, that conversation here yeah, might not happen exactly like that but it's along the lines of them helping out, saying hello and then going. Anyway that's a new plot details I have for you and there's also been a brand new animatic posted by David E. Duncan on Vimeo. I'm not sure of the copyright on things like this so I'm just going to talk over the top of it so that it's at least fair use but I've linked Duncan's Vimeo below if you want to watch the full thing without an annoying British dude mumbling over the top of it. Now Duncan worked on Spider-Man 4 and over on his Vimeo page he said the following when discussing this clip. This is one of half a dozen animatics I produced for the ill-fated fourth Raimi Spider-Man movie. Studio politics, creative differences and bad internet reactions to John Malkovich's The Vulture caused the plug to be pulled December of 2009. However, one month later, Sony moved forward with the Andrew Garfield reboot. Now, in case you don't know, Spider-Man 4 was originally meant to have the Vulture face off against Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker. Spider-Man 3 sort of derailed the franchise a bit and it's clear that the studio were attempting to go back to a simpler story structure with one main villain instead of several. The clip was actually supposed to be the final battle and they do the old thing of the villain finding out who Spider-Man is but unlike most of the other movies in the franchise, this just makes Vulture more angry. The animatic ends with Peter beating Vulture and he crash lands. I'm not 100% sure if the final exchange would have been through dialogue or not as Vulture clearly survives but this is listed as the final battle so meh who knows. Anyway, great clip of what might have been and I am hyped to see Toby back in the MCU as he's one of the best of the three maybe, I don't know, depends if you, if you count the Spider-Verse or not, but he's one of, one of 
the Spider-Man actors that people know. Now, that's some more leaks for you, Bishas, and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. As a thank you for commenting on the video, you'll be entered into a prize draw on the 30th of June, in which we're giving away three copies of the Phase 3 MCU box set. All you have to do to be one of the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the leaks. The winners of last month's competition are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the Loki fan theory that Peggy Carter could be seen in the first episode. We've gone over the entire thing and also discussed some little easter eggs that you might have missed, so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. Without the way, thank you for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care and get that bloody damn door fixed because I want that trailer. Goodbye.